Good morning, fifth grade. Today we're going to begin our new novel, The Birch Bark House. Um, before we get started, we have a quick write. It says, what are the Ojibwa people like? Okay, and so right now you just need to think about what do you think they're like? What do you know about Native Americans from the past? Like, what do you think about them? And then today we're going to... Um, we're going to see if your predictions were correct or if you change your mind about them based on what we read. So go ahead, write down one or two things that you think you know about the Ojibwe people or just Native Americans in general. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the focus question. It says, who are the Ojibwe or the Anishinaabe people? What are defining or important aspects of their society and history? And today we're going to focus on building background knowledge about the Ojibwa and using that information to explain the events that happen in the prologue of our book. Our vocabulary words today are clan, and that's a group of close-knit people. Often they are part of the same family, and so this is an example of a clan, a group of families that live together. Um, number two is reliant. That's when you are dependent on someone or something. So these police officers, they're partners, so they um, rely or they are reliant on their partner. And the third one is smallpox. And this child has small box, and you can see that it has all these bumps all over their body. It's a con very contagious disease where you get a fever and you get these bumps that will leave permanent scars. And um, we don't deal with smallpox anymore in the United States um, because there was a vaccination. And so you've all been vaccinated for smallpox, and so we've been able to get rid of the disease in the United States. All right, go ahead and turn the page in your notes, and we are gonna focus on just the prologue for right now. And the prologue is, um, the purpose of the prologue is to give you information or background knowledge about the characters in the story before the real story starts, okay? All right, so let's begin reading. We're gonna use our CSPS strategy. The only person left alive on the island was a baby girl. The tired men who had come there to pick up furs from the Anishinaabe people stood uneasily on the rocky shore. The voyagers watched from a distance as the baby crawled in a circle, whimpering and pitiful. Her tiny dress of good blue wool was embroidered with white beads and ribbons, and her new moccasins were very carefully sewn. It was clear she had been loved. It was also clear that her family, who had loved her, was gone. All the fires in the village were cold. We'll stop right there because we have information about our character and our setting. In box one, we would write, a group of European fur traders visited the Anishinaabe tribe and discovered that everyone had died, or sorry, and discovered that everyone except a baby has died. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And you would write down the second sentence. The tired men who had come there to pick up the Anishinaabe people stood uneasily on the rocky shore. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the setting. All right, and for the setting, um, we know that everyone on the island, this is number two, everyone on the island where the Anishinaabe people lived died of smallpox except a baby girl. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And for the quote, we write down this first sentence. 
the only person alive on the island was a baby girl. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to turn to keep reading. We're at the bottom of the page. The, de the dead laid sadly in blankets, curled as though sleeping. Smallpox had killed them. The voyagers trembled at the thought that the disease might have already chosen one of them. Surely, they muttered, the baby had the sickness too. She's sick. She looks tired, said one man, man as she lay down against one of the blanketed figures. Let her sleep. Birds were singing, dozens of tiny white-throated sparrows. The trilling, rippling sweetness of their songs contrasted strangely with the silent horror below. One, first one, then the other of the men turned away. They got back into their canoes. And so in box number three, we have the problem. We would write, the men think that they have already been infected with the disease and decide not to take the baby with them. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And for the quote, you would write down this sentence. The voyagers trembled at the thought that the disease might have already chosen one of them. Surely, they muttered, the baby had the sickness too. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the solution. So they get back into their canoe. Let's go to the last paragraph. As they paddled toward the next island, all were silent, thoughtful. Some wore hard expressions. One man had tears in his eyes. His name was Hat. He thought of his wife and decided he would tell her about the baby. If there was anyone in the world who'd go and rescue that little girl, it was his wife. He shivered a little as he thought of her. He couldn't help it. Tallow, she was called, and sometimes she scared him with her temper. Other times he was amazed at her courage. He grimaced in shame. Unlike him, his wife was afraid of nothing. And for the solution, in box four we would write, Hat decided to tell his wife about the baby because he knew she wouldn't be afraid to rescue it. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. For the quote, it says, he thought of his wife and decided he would tell her about the baby. If anyone in the world, if there was anyone in the world who'd go and rescue that girl, it was his wife. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the paragraph. It says, how do the voyagers respond to the baby? What does their response reveal about their character? 